Okay, I have a few minutes to check some emails, so let's see what we got. Hi, Doc Jazz. I love your ocarina playing. Could you tell me which ocarina is best for beginners? There's a couple answers to that question, so I'll save that one for later. Hey, David. I was wondering if you could help me pick out my first ocarina. That's along the same line, so I'll do those two together. Doc Jazz, which ocarina should I start with? Hi David, which would you recommend for my first ocarina? Which is the best? What's easiest to Did start with? Did I buy the right kind? I love your ocarina, but I started to tell me which one ocarina should I start with. Where did you find your answer? I was wondering if you could find the ocarina that should I start with. I think I need to make a video. So the number one question I get asked is, which ocarina is best for the beginner? And unfortunately, there's no simple answer to that because each ocarina has its pros and cons and everybody's different. So this video is to offer some tips, suggestions, and overviews of two ocarinas I would highly recommend for the beginner. But let's get started by talking about which ones you should probably stay away from. If you've done any searching for your first ocarina, you've probably seen one of these. These are made in South America, but most are from Peru, which is how they became known as Peruvian ocarinas. You'll find them with 4 to 10 holes, and usually have some intricate artwork on the front. This is why most people like to collect them, but they're not very good for playing, and here's why. They're made from a cheap clay which doesn't resonate very well. Usually they're poorly tuned if tuned at all, and because of this, it can be embarrassing and discouraging to play in front of others. The other ones you might want to stay away from are the plastic manufactured ocarinas. I know a lot of people who have complained that they're airy and a little out of tune, but I also know there's a few exceptions out there, so I'd like to review those soon. Even though I suggest not getting these kinds of ocarina, if these are the only two that are available to you, then it's good to remember that having some sort of ocarina is better than having none at all. Now in order to figure out which ocarina is the best one for you, I have a few questions that may be of some help. If you just want to own one as a collectible, try not to spend too much money for sound quality. If you're just interested in owning a Zelda replica, you can click a link I placed over here in the description, which will take you to a list of available Zelda ocarinas. If you're more interested in actually learning how to play, since you're just starting out, I wouldn't spend more than $20 to $60 on an ocarina because you may not like playing the ocarina at all. But typically the better quality of the instrument, the more expensive it's going to be. The ones with great quality are usually priced between $100 and $500. Are you looking for a specific style such as the sweet potato, the pendant, or the inline, or do you just want whichever is the easiest and most comfortable to play? I believe that when it comes to ocarinas, the look is just as important as the sound, so that's good to keep in mind. If you're not interested in playing with other instruments, I want to stress about picking a certain key. However, it is important that you enjoy the range of the ocarina. You have four general pitch ranges. You have the soprano, which is the highest and the smallest ocarina the alto, which is medium-high, the tenor, which is medium-low, and the bass, which is the lowest and largest ocarina. Deciding on which range to get is largely based on personal preference, so if possible, make sure you hear sound samples of the ocarinas you're interested in. Experience will also help you know which ranges you like the most. Just remember that the higher the range, the smaller the ocarina will be, which means it'll be easier to carry around. And that leads us to our final question. Most sweet potato ocarinas can't slip into your pocket, but the smaller pendant, Peruvian, and inlines can. Some also come with neck straps to wear when you're on the go. Now I've already mentioned that there's several ocarina types out there, but the two that I would highly recommend for beginners are the sweet potato, also known as a transverse ocarina, and the English pendant. And here are the pros and cons of both. What is most unique about the English pendant is that it can play an entire octave with only four holes, up to ten notes if it has the two additional thumb holes. And this is possible through its use of various finger combinations, each with a different pitch. It only requires four to six fingers, and they are some of the least expensive on the market. The pendant shape makes them easy to carry around, and they're usually very light, which makes them comfortable to wear. The only downside is that the finger combinations may take some time to learn, but once you have them memorized, it becomes incredibly easy to master. However, the more popular ocarina is probably the transverse. It can have between 8 and 12 holes with a range of up to 13 diatonic notes. That's an octave plus 4. 
It uses a linear finger pattern, which means as you lift each finger from right to left, you get the next note in the scale. Depending on the amount of holes, it requires 8 to 10 fingers. And these can be a little more expensive because of their popularity and they take more time to make. They can be a little troublesome to carry around, and because of their weight, the larger sized ocarinas should not be worn around the neck for long periods of time. Unlike the other ocarina types, this ocarina is actually the easiest to learn, but probably the most difficult to master. If you're not on information overload already, there's just a few more things to consider. Certain ocarinas, such as the pendant, require fewer fingers, which can make it less confusing for the smaller kids, while those who are older should do fine with using all their fingers to play. The size of an ocarina is proportional to its range, so if you have big hands like me, you may have some trouble playing the small soprano ocarina, while those who have small to medium sized hands may have some trouble playing the much larger bass ocarinas. And finally, if you or anyone you live with, such as children, seniors, or even pets, are sensitive to high pitch sounds, I would not recommend purchasing a soprano ocarina. Some sopranos may shriek if blown too hard, which can permanently damage hearing, especially with those who have sensitive hearing already. In that case, the lower tenor and bass ocarinas would be a much better choice. Now you're probably thinking, okay, now I have an idea of what I want, but where should I get my ocarina? I actually review different kinds of ocarinas here on my channel, and I definitely recommend checking those out, but I've also listed a few of my favorite ocarina sellers here in the description box. All of them sell awesome ocarinas, and I know they'd appreciate your business and your support. In closing, I would like to say that the ocarina is probably the easiest instrument I've ever learned to play, and while it may be easier to pick up if you have any prior music experience, I don't believe experience is necessary. With a little practice, anyone can learn to play the ocarina. Well, I hope this video has helped you, and if you'd like some extra help learning to play that new ocarina, be sure to subscribe and stick around because I have some new videos to help coming out soon. Thanks for watching, and God bless.